You know, when, when, I, when I think back about my story, I, I hate my story, and, and I've told you that before. As much as I hate my own past and my own story, uh, I see how God's used it to help so many people over the years, and he continues to use it to help a lot of people. He's also used it to help me. God's also used my jacked up story to help me in my own ability to forgive other people. And if you don't know my story, it's brutal, it's ugly, it's horrific. My past is um, unfaithfulness, uh, adultery, infidelity, whatever you call it, that's my story. I promise you, it makes the top three worst sins of all on every Christian's list. That's my story. And here's the deal with that. The consequences of that over the last 11 years, 12 years of my life have been devastating. So much hurt and pain. So much hurt and pain. My life, my family, my relationships, my marriage. So much that. And so let me, let me pause here and say this to you. If you're on the edge of doing that, if you're on the edge, maybe, maybe emotionally you've already gone there, would you do me a favor? Would you please stop, turn around, and run the other way as fast as you can? You do not want to experience that pain. You do not want your family to experience that pain. It's been the story of the last decade of my life. I've been dealing with that. I don't want that for you. I want something better than that for you. And so when, when I think about my story and I, and I return to my past, obviously two things try to come up, guilt and shame. God's not in that, but, but, but something else comes up in, in, in that same thing too. Here's one of the things I've discovered about the journey into my past, that there's a healthy awareness and humility that comes from that. There's a healthy awareness and humility that comes from that too. And I think God's in that. I think it's what Dan Allender talks about in his book, Leading with a Limp. If you're a leader in any capacity, you need to read that book, Leading with a Limp. It basically says that because of my sin and brokenness in my own life, and I've had a bunch of it, that I live and lead today with a distinct limp. I live and lead today with a distinct limp. There's this beautiful scar that I will carry for the rest of my life. That I lead with a, with a limp. And so that sounds great, right? Like, oh, you're good, right? And so it sounds like I'd love to be able to step here and t- stand up here today and tell you that because of that limp that I have, I am so quick to forgive others whenever they wrong me. Right? I just told you in the last four weeks of this series, I've told you two examples of where I just couldn't get there. When I had other pastors in town, I felt like they were judging me because of my past. And when my friend, my good, close friend, left this church about a year and a half ago, Both those moments, neither of those moments did I go to forgiveness. In fact, can I just tell you this? Forgiveness wasn't even on my mind. And there are more stories like that. But here's the good news. God's really working on me. He's working on me, and he's growing me up in this stuff. In the past year, I've had another really close, really close and deep friendship person say some things about me and my leadership to some other people to some other people, and it got back to me, and it hurt me deeply. But here's, here's something that was cool. I was able to get to forgiveness more quickly than I've ever been able to get there in my life. It was almost, boom, instantaneous. I mean, it surprised even. I was like, wow. Well, what, what? And so how, how did that work? I mean, what's going on there? And the answer is God was able to more quickly get me back to this, what I'm talking about today. It was like, wait a minute, time out. There was a moment in my life when I was on the other end of this, in desperate need of forgiveness too. See, see, I think there's something to this. And I think this is, this is a part of the beauty and benefit of this thing we say all the time in this place, me too. See, me too is not just for the benefit of our new friends or here for the very first time. I mean, it helps you when you're new because it's like all your story's safe here. When I say, hey, we've all made mistakes, we've all hurt people, even the people we love the most, and we've all been hurt by people, and we all have parts of our lives and stories that we wish could delete, erase, change, and do over, that's true. New people are like, yes, I am safe here. All my story's safe here. This feels like a safe and welcoming place, but it's not just for our new friends. It's a great reminder for all of us, too, that every single one of us in the room has a story, and every single one of our story... Every single one of our stories has what? Some pretty jacked up parts. We are all, every single one of us, completely and absolutely hopeless without the grace and the forgiveness of Jesus. We're we're hopeless. And so we don't return to our past for guilt and shame. God's not in that. We return to our past to experience grace Because the truth is that you and I are only capable of extending grace. And we best extend grace and forgiveness to other people when we stay in and continue to live in our own need for it.